So welcome back. So this is part two eh, of uh, a question about graphing a particular function. And uh, what was the function we, in the previous video? So fx is 3 over x minus x squared. So a reciprocal function. We completed the table and then we pulled the coordinates and we drew it like that. All right. And now we're going to answer the questions about the graph. Yeah, what is it going to say? It says, use your graph to solve fx equals 1. Find a value for z so that fx equals z has three solutions. That's question C. Question D, draw a suitable line and use your graph to solve 3 over x minus x squared equals 4x. And question E, draw a tangent to the graph y equals fx at x is 1 and use it to calculate an estimate of the gradient at x equals 1. Yeah? And like I said before, a lot of students, eh, when they see this, this, this type of, uh, of math question, they just, they, they blank. They say, oh, that, that's too difficult. That's too much language. I can't do it. It's worth a lot of points. It must be really difficult. Yeah? But that's not true. Yeah? I'll show you. Rather than to focus on the things you don't know, let's focus on the things you actually know. And you'll notice you can do most of this yourself as well. All right. Let's start with the first one. Use your graph, I should say graph, not graphs. Use your graph to solve fx equals 1. But what does that mean? fx is my function. fx equals, we said, 3 over x minus x squared. And now the question says, when is that 1? When is fx 1? When is y 1? Well, where is y 1? Let me see y is 1 over here, yeah? But y is also 1 over there. And y is 1 over here. Because the line y is 1 is a horizontal line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a horizontal line. The question says, use your graph to solve fx equals 1. So I'm going to use my graph, look. And where is my function? Where is my function? y 1 that is over there so i'm going to draw a dotted line it's hardly visible because it's so small down and then i'm going to say well at 1.2 x equals 1.2 when x is 1.2 fx is 1 y is 1 all right, and make sure you understand it's one, why it's 1.2, because it's one, two, three, four, five blocks is one, so each tiny block is 0 0.2, and so 1.2. All right, we continue. Find a value for z so that fx equals z has three solutions. Oh dear, that sounds very difficult, yeah? But hang on a minute, that is the second part uh, of question C. Because in the first part it said fx equals 1. How many solutions did I have for fx equals 1? I have one solution. We just said x is 1.2. And everywhere here I have one solution. One solution, one solution, one solution, one solution, one. Exactly two solutions over here. Do you see that? If I believe y is minus 4, I have exactly two solutions, one and one over there, two. The question is, give me a number for z, so you have three solutions. Do it again. One solution, one solution, one solution, one solution, one, two solutions. Hey, hang on a minute, over here I have three solutions. And yeah, now I'm going too far. But here I have three solutions. Yeah, one, two, three. And I can just use my ruler to see that. So for instance, when z is minus six, let me write this down. For instance, when z is minus six, you have three solutions, yeah? But you could also have taken minus seven, because I also have one, two, three solutions or perhaps minus five, yeah? So there's a range of values possible for it to have three solutions. Okay, hopefully that is clear to you. Now, we continue, yeah? Because we are really gaining points now. 
draw a suitable line and use your graph to solve 3 over x minus x squared equals 4x. Now, what does it say? I have to draw a suitable line and then I have to solve this. And you should be able to identify, well, this part, 3 over x minus x squared, is actually, 3 over x minus x squared, is actually my graph. So the question is, when is my graph the same as 4x? And 4x, eh, draw a suitable line, 4x is indeed a linear function, yeah, with the highest power of x being 1. So that is my line. I have to draw, yeah, if I just summarize that, I have to draw the line 4x. Okay, I could draw a table of values. But 4x that has a y-intercept at the origin, yeah, and a gradient of 4. So one unit to the right, one, two, three, four up. I know that this is going to be um, my line, so I'm going to uh, draw the line. There we go. And you use a sharp pencil, of course, huh? There we go. A sharp pencil and a ruler. So just to summarize that. It tells me to draw a suitable line, and then I have to use the graph to solve this equation. I noticed, well, the left part of that equation is the graph already there, equals, and the right part of that equation is the line I have to draw, because I can only use my graph to solve it. When is my original function equal to 4x? Where are they equal? Over here over there. That's where they're equal. Fantastic. I'm using, I'm using my graph. And what are the values of x? Minus 1. Yeah. And if I take this one down, yeah, and you do that with uh, a sharp pencil and a ruler, yeah. So x would be minus 1 or x would be, what shall I say, 0.8. Yeah, so I've used my graph to solve that equation by drawing a suitable line. And the only suitable line for you to draw is the line 4x. Because now you're asking yourself, when is your original graph the same as that particular line? Okay, final question. Draw a tangent to the graph at x equals 1 and use it to calculate an estimate of the gradient at x equals 1. So to calculate an estimate. All right. A tangent at x equals 1. You get a point if you do that. Yeah, you get a point if you draw the tangent. What is a tangent? A tangent is what I call a touch line. Yeah? So, at x equals 1, so where is my graph at x equals 1? That is over here. Yeah? I have to draw a line that it just barely touches my graph over there. So, not like this. Because now I'm cutting the graph, you see that? Not like that because I'm going straight through it. No, I'm approaching my curve and I'm just barely touching it at x equals 1. Yeah? You have to do that with a lot of accuracy. You're going to take some time for that. You're going to get loads of points for it. Yeah? So you might as well take your time. Okay. So if I do that properly, um, let me just have a go. There we go. I'm going to use a pen now, yeah, because the thickness of my marker is just going to make it all less accurate. At x equals 1. There we go. So I'm going to draw my tangent. There we go. It's just touching it. It's just touching my graph at x equals 1. Yeah? And you get a point for that. So draw a tangent. I've taken, you know, 30, 40 seconds to do so. That's a point. And I have to use it to calculate an estimate of the gradient. Yeah? And how do I calculate the gradient? Um, so the gradient is the difference in the y direction over the difference in the x direction. Yeah? Or perhaps you know something like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what do I have to do? Yeah, and I'm just going to continue here. I have to find two suitable coordinates, yeah? And then I calculate, because I have to calculate an estimate of the gradient. So for instance, this coordinate is good, yeah? And 
over here, yeah, perhaps you can't see that very good, but the coordinate over there, so that is zero, 07, yeah, zero to the right, seven up, and over there it is 1.4, 1 1.4, 1 zero, yeah. So I'm finding two easy coordinates, yeah, nicely on a point of intersection on the grid behind it, yeah, and then I will use those coordinates to calculate the gradient, yeah, so I'll do that over here. Uh, y2, so for instance this one, so 7 minus 0 divided by 0 minus 1.4. You see that? Now first of all, is that going to be a positive or negative gradient? Well, it's going to be negative, eh? it's going down. Eh? So I'm expecting a negative answer. 7 minus 1.4, yeah, plug it in your calculator, it's going to tell you a minus five. Fantastic. So apparently, if I go one step to the right, you know, one unit to the right, I go minus five up, yeah, so five down. One, two, three, four, five. Spot on, fantastic. All right, that was the question, yeah? This is an IGCSE question or a GCSE math question, uh, whatever course you are taking, where first of all, you get loads of points if you simply, or not simply, if you, there we are, if you complete the table, yeah, by evaluating your function for those axes. I've showed you, your calculator can do it for you. Then, if you take care of plotting those coordinates, yeah, if you make sure you don't connect them, if you make sure you stay within the boundaries, yeah, if you draw a smooth curve through those coordinates, you get loads of points as well, yeah. And then, the questions about your graph, yeah, you have to draw some horizontal lines, you have to draw a diagonal, yeah, you have to draw a tangent, everybody can do that, yeah, or at least everybody can do 80% of that, yeah, and I'm sure if you get an 80% score or more on your maths exam, you will be a happy man or a woman, okay? So hopefully that was useful, otherwise let me know on my website, explainingmaths.com, or on my Facebook or Twitter account. I'll see you later.